What's up? It's me. I'm back. Not only am I hosting, I'm also running. And uh, yeah, we uh, we're doing Wipeout now. And uh, I uh, I'm pretty excited to show show off this game. I uh, I was whatever about Time Splitters. That game's more of a more of a ceremonial thing. Uh, but but Wipeout is the game I'm uh, I'm particularly passionate about showing off. So I can't wait to uh, can't wait to get this run underway. Before I uh, before I start, I'd like to uh, I'd like to introduce my co-commentator, who is also the host for my run. Yeah, it's me, Ness underscore. I got Realm into this game because I kept harassing him to buy it on PS5. I mean, I I already own the game. That's why I was willing to get into it because it was at no additional cost to me. But yeah, I've I've grown to love and enjoy this game, and let's uh, let's get into it. So we're going to be playing on the tournament mode. We're going to be on A class speed, which is the second highest speed class. Uh, yeah, I think it's akin to 200 CC in a Mario Kart game, uh, with A plus being 300 and uh, novice difficulty, all that good stuff. Uh, and then we're going to set up a tournament of all ten tracks, like so. I think that's correct. Uh, confirm that, and then time is going to start as soon as I select the Pfizer prototype, which is the ship I'm going to be using. Uh, so let's start the timer in five, four, three, two, one, go. Pfizer. GL. Okay. Thank you for the GL. Yeah. So, I uh, I've done one marathon run of this game before ever, and it went very well. So big shoes to fill. Just a word quickly before I get into explaining the tech of the game. Uh, I had to turn the music off because it contains an all-star lineup of bands like The Prodigy, The Chemical Brothers, Noisia, and uh, yeah, that's not very DMCA friendly, unfortunately. So the fires up prototype. I'll talk about the ship. Um, it has a variable top speed, uh, which you can see down in the bottom right corner. The number of yellow uh, like elements that fill the uh, the bar down the bottom. Uh, when that is full. Uh, the ship can reach its maximum top speed, uh, and the way to increase it is by running over these blue boost pads on the uh, on the floor here. Uh, and you you can get up to ten of them to increase your top speed by the maximum. Uh, but it also resets at the start of every new lap. So here you'll see it resets, and now I have to collect ten more over the course of the lap. Um, the reason we use the Pfizer prototype is because the top speed of the prototype ship when you've gone over all 10 boost pads is significantly higher than uh, than all of the um, all of the other like speed ships and agility ships and stuff stuff like that. So uh, it is the uh, is the fastest ship in the game overall. Although some tracks are slightly faster with speed ships, um, this one though I believe is faster typically with the uh, prototype ship. Um, a word on the uh, on the power-ups I'm collecting. The only ones you really have to uh, overly care about are the boost and the autopilot, which both come from the green uh, power-up slots. The way it works basically is that the, the yellow power-ups are offensive power-ups, so things like rockets and missiles, whilst the green power-ups are defensive power-ups, uh, which include autopilot and turbo. I uh, uh, activate the autopilot here, and the reason why I do that is because you actually gain a very minor speed boost if you uh, if you activate the autopilot. But the the only issue with it is that sometimes it will lead you astray from the boost pads, which can make you go slower overall. Um, some of the tech in this game. We've got air braking, which you'll see me doing quite often, where I either press L1 or R1 on the controller to, uh, to sort of slow me down whilst also dragging me in a particular direction. It's the primary method you'll see me uh, see me turning corners. Um, you know, there's, there's very little uh, there's very little um, steering control. It's very much based on the air brake, especially if you're in the air. Um, you, you basically won't be touching the um, touching the steering at all. And you'll also see me barrel rolling, um, and what that means is basically um, I tap. I think it's like left, left, right, or right, right, left. Um, honestly, I don't know the exact. Uh, actually, it might be left, right, left. It is left, it. right, left, right, left, right. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things that, it's like, once you learn to do it, it becomes kind of intuitive to you. It just becomes muscle memory, and so I don't really remember the exact. Uh, 
I don't really remember the exact inputs, but uh, yeah. The barrel rolling is a bit like tricking in Mario Kart, where if you if you finish um, your barrel roll in midair, you'll get a uh, you'll get a speed boost when you land. So on A class difficulty, uh, every race is five laps, and there's about five, so that's the end of race number one, and we got ten of those to do. If you were here for my time splitters run earlier, you may uh, you may notice a pattern. I run lots of games that have patterns of ten in them, uh, ten levels in time splitters, ten races in this category. Um, also, Gran Turismo Three, which I ran at SS4C5, has uh, has ten races uh, in the time trial category that I, I did for that. So maybe I just like the number ten. And yeah, I think that's. Uh, it's pretty much all the all the sort of basics covered. Um, Ultima is a pretty good uh, Ultima being the the first track. I think Ultima is a pretty pretty good overview circuit. Um, there's nothing too complicated, um, so it's, it's very easy to to explain all the sort of basic tech, and then we can dive a bit more into the nuance as we go along. Um, I can tell you exactly what I'm doing on, on each individual track and where the, where the circuits are different. So, Rockway Stadium is the name of this circuit, and it's, uh, it's quite difficult because there is a, uh, a little bit of root uh, deviation that you can try and go for if you have a turbo, but it is, uh, it is quite difficult to, to do, so we'll see if I manage it. I'll shut off where exactly it is, um, if I can just so I want to pick up a, a green path or up from the edge of the yeah. So usually you turbo off of that ramp, I just jumped off there, and it, uh, it saves maybe like a second or so. It's, uh, it's just the ever so slightly more optimal route. Unfortunately this lap was not very good. So a, a word on the a word on the, uh, the scaling top speed of the prototype as well. Um, if you hit a wall, or on tracks that have out of bounds sections, if you go out of bounds, you'll lose one of the uh, the notches on the uh, on the, the like the thing that you see down in the bottom right, the bar. Um, so you have to build that up again. So ideally, you want to stay away from the walls and stay away from falling out of bounds, because not only does it like literally slow you down in terms of uh, in terms of making you slower. But it also uh, it also will make your top speed lower overall, and then you've got to run over more boost pads to uh, build that top speed back up. Uh, another thing about the barrel rolling that I didn't mention before was that every time you do a barrel roll, if you look down in the bottom left corner as I do one, you'll see that my ship health, which is represented by the percentage, uh, that will decrease by 15%. Uh, ooh, that's not quite right, but that's, it's okay. Um, so yeah, it will. It will decrease by 15% every time I, I do a, uh, a barrel roll, and the way to build that back up is to collect a power up, and if you absorb it rather than using it, which you do by pressing circle to absorb instead of square to use, uh, it will re restore a certain portion of your health depending on the the relative power of the power up that you. So most most defensive power ups typically will help you absorb 15, like 10 to 15 percent. Uh, I don't know the exact values, but yeah, it, it's typically around 15 percent. So it's one one power up absorption for every one uh, uh, power roll that you do is typically a good sort of uh, good sort of balance. Is there anything uh, you'd want to add right now, Nez? I'm trying to think of anything else to explain. Yeah. So earlier you said. Um... Like when you barrel roll and you finish in the air, uh, you, you get a speed boost. The speed boost uh, is really, really important because because uh, you because you want to get the speed boost for building up your top speed on the prototype, but also you just want to be going fast in general. So you want as much, as much speed as possible. Um, with the barrel rolls, you actually have a little bit of leeway with it, so you kind of land on your side as you finish one. And like I just get... did that. Sorry. Yeah. Exactly, um, and you'll still get it. And uh, you can do it sometimes on really, really small hills, and you can just get the speed. And it really just makes a difference, especially like if I'm racing. Well, I don't get it. He does the way around. You can really just race the loser. Yeah, that's the thing about this game is that it really is a game of sort of fine margins. Um, you know, if you if you make a very small 
searing mistake or you air brake for slightly too long or you miss a barrel roll or something like that, you know, it can it can spiral much further out of control and uh, you know you can you can go into a crash and potentially lose like three or four seconds just from one very minor mistake, which in other games might only cost you sort of half a second or so. It's very very punishing and uh, getting the uh, getting the control scheme down is really really uh, difficult to do. You know, it's one of those games that's fairly easy to learn but very difficult to master. Um, and uh, speaking of masters, I'd like to take the uh, time while I remember to give a shout out to another runner of this game, the, uh, the current world record holder to my knowledge, Foden44, who, uh, who I know in the past at least has been, uh, been working really hard on, uh, on bringing the time down to this game, and also has helped me discover a number of, uh, a number of small nuances to make my, my racing line slightly better. And, uh, just overall improve my technique in this game has been incredibly helpful and probably is a big reason as to why I am able to play the game in quite the fashion that I am, so a big shout out to him. Yeah, even though Rome is actually playing on the prototype, there's like a couple more uh, viable uh, ships and keys for the run. Uh, so, this one is obviously like the most versatile. You just have to have some extremely good lines and not play this stuff so you can keep your top speed. Um, we can also use the Piranha of Speed, which is the fastest ship in the game. Not very handling, so you have to get really sad. Um, Tyrex, which is a bit slower than that, but has a bit more handling. Um, and one of the other prototypes, I don't remember which one. Um, Those are all pretty valuable. I'm trying to remember which one it is, because all the the thing the, the prototypes in this game are interesting. So there's five uh, different teams that all have four ships, and that is the uh, the speed ship, which is the one that's most geared towards going quickly. The agility ship, which is the one that can turn corners the best. The uh, the combat ship, which is the one that has the most health and the most firepower, which. Uh, typically is designed for the more sort of dogfight events that you don't really see so much in the speedrun. Um, those, are, those are more seen in the, the campaign uh, of this game. Uh, and then the, the final type of ship that all five teams have is the prototype ship, which is basically a bit of a wild card, and each team's prototype ship is uh, very, very different. Um, I'm trying to think of some examples. So there's, there's one... Uh, there's yeah, this I, one, I, obviously, I, which uh, which is doing what I explained earlier. There's another one which I think has is it, it has no steering and you can only air brake. Yeah, so the Piranha prototype you can you can get, you can't steer. It has the fastest top speed in the game, but you can only air brake, and it's it's really funny. It's not really like practically useful. It's just for fun. I think it has a couple events in the campaign. Um, there's um, HE Systems prototype uh, has the best uh, best handling in the game, um, but you can't do regular barrel rolls, you have to do double barrel rolls, um, which doesn't seem bad until you realize how many like cheeky barrel rolls we do. Um, it's still really viable, because right? um, you get a lot more of a speed boost than just a regular barrel roll, since it's making you do two. Um, it just also has extremely, extremely low health. And I think there is the Aragon one, which is, uh, it has normal speed, but it has really, really high health, and it has really, really low acceleration. So once you get up to speed, uh, you just like, can ram into whatever you want, and you won't die, or slow down. So, um, one thing I, I didn't mention before that I'll mention because I just missed it, um, is that after the countdown on the go, if you start accelerating exactly as the announcer says the word go, uh, you can get a cheeky little uh, speed boost uh, off the start, which uh, is probably worth about half a second to a second uh, on each race. So it's not much, but it, it adds up obviously, you know, it's five seconds every possible run. That was the first one I missed, hopefully I don't miss too, too many. It's not something I typically count, uh, because it's not super important, but it's, it's still something that you want to uh, you want to achieve where you can. I don't want to be missing too many of those. Uh, we just finished Capital Reach, uh, and now we're on to Downtown, the fourth race of the 10. Uh, this is probably my my personal favorite, or definitely 
definitely in my top two. Um, I just think the, uh, the the driving lines in this track are super smooth um, when I don't do that. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. You know, I've grinded this uh, this IL maybe a hundred plus times. And uh, it's just one of those one of those levels that I love to optimize a lot. There are some in this this game like uh, Rockway Stadium, which you saw earlier, which I wasn't a massive fan of. I uh, I'm just realizing now I forgot to uh, forgot to make my camera not autofocus. Um, so apologies, uh, especially to Rising Phoenix 45 in the chat who uh, constantly reminded me of this on my own stream. But uh, it's been a while since I've since I've done one of my own streams, so I'm uh, I'm a little bit out of practice. I'll, I'll try and get that fixed. Actually, something to note on this track is um, that one part, kind of just after the beginning segment, which, uh, where there's just this one really, really steep ramp going up. That one. Uh, yeah, there, there's a way that Rob can go off of it where he won't lose very much time by going in the air. Yeah, and it, you, it actually you have like to, it has a variance of like two and a half seconds or something. You have to take a slightly wider line than than what would look to be an optimal line. Um, you don't want to you don't want to hit the apex of the actual corner. You want to go slightly wide of the apex um, because if you I you probably saw it. I think it was lap two, lap one or two that I accidentally did it, where I went way too tight on the inside of the corner. And what that meant was basically I got launched into the air, um, and because my my speed was, or sort of my trajectory was aiming a lot more upward than it was aiming forward across the track, it cost me a few seconds right there. Really. But that's the end of uh, that's the end of downtown. Um, like I said, very fun track. It's one of those things that you've really got to you really got to think about every single line that you're taking, and and you know if you take your eye off the ball for even like a second or so, you will just go careering into a wall. Or you'll accidentally, you know, take the the upward trajectory I was talking about before. Um, it's it's a really really cool level in my opinion. Um, this one is also pretty fun, Queens Mall. Um, the only downside to this one is that I don't think there are enough boost pads for the Pfizer prototype uh, to really be viable here. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't do it in an IL. You'd probably only do it in an RTA because the prototype is faster. Really uh, so we're going to do a cheeky thing here, where we get some uh, some boost pads, and then also jump over the uh, the, the middle of that uh, that downhill ramp, and uh, that enables me to get a barrel roll and a boost pad, where usually you probably only expect to get one or, or the other. It's uh, it's it's fairly straightforward to do. Um, and I'm a pretty big fan of, uh, of the tech that was also found by uh, by Foden, who I mentioned earlier. If uh, if there's anything uh, sort of like specific, any any cool like skip or anything like that in this game, it was probably discovered by Foden 44. Or I think I think Nez discovered a, a couple of things. Um, I am just the guy who piggybacks other people's strats and then executes them better. Yeah, actually the um getting the boost pad and then barrel roll rolling over to get another boost pad and then angling in. That, that's something that I like, figured out. Was that saying you you can't? I thought that was yeah. uh, I thought it was Foden. Okay. No, it wasn't useful for Foden when he was doing it because because uh, I think at the time he was doing Prana power speed. Oh, okay. But it's all more useful for. for the but yeah, but yeah, Nez and Nez and Foden are the. Uh... I like the, the theory crafters in this game, and I'm the, the execution monkey, I guess, is probably the, the best way to describe it. I haven't played this game in, in like, three months. I'm yeah, it's not been a, a theory crafter anymore. Well, I think I think that's how it used to be a couple months ago. Um, it's been a little while since most of us have played this. Do you know if Frozen's still playing this? I haven't been on Twitch very often uh, in the past few months. Um, uh, he's been playing uh, White Up 3 a lot more. Yeah, but, he, uh, but, he, so but he, he's still playing this. He's a he's sort of a general uh, a general white power runner and, and you know a lot better at the game than, than I am um, and yeah a lot of the a lot of the strats in this game and uh, just in the white power series in general were discovered by him so I really I can't I know I've been talking about him a lot but I really can't praise him enough for how uh, easy he makes the uh, the game and the speed run. Compared to how it would be without the uh, the instant attack. 
damage. I remember now what it was that Frozen told me about this level. It was before you go through the shortcut at the bottom of the ramp uh, to take a slightly wider line to pick up the green uh, power pad first. Uh, because sometimes you get a boost from it and it doesn't really cost you that much time to go for it. Here, yeah. um, I didn't talk about it throughout the whole thing, but at the top of the ramp, I'm pushing forward on the D-pad and that causes my ship to pitch down. And that's really important to do because otherwise your ship will go sailing into the, uh, into the, like the, I don't know what you'd call it, the, uh, the start line, uh, like sign at the, um, at the top of the, of the start line. Um, you just go crashing straight into that if you don't pitch your ship down slightly. So it's quite important to do. There's a few instances, uh, here where I, I alter ship pitch. It's not super important for A+, but it is very, very important in A++. Uh, A++ is very, very technical. You have to have a really, really strong understanding of the, of the ship's physics. That's not to say that you don't have to have a strong understanding of the ship's physics in this game, but A++ is like, you know, every, every mistake you make is going to be worth many seconds because of how fast you're traveling. It's basically the equivalent of a theoretical 300cc in Mario Kart. It is very, very fast and very, very unforgiving. And that's why most of us enjoy playing on A class instead, uh, because it's a little bit more forgiving. Uh, a lot of the shortcuts that exist in the game are much more easy to take on A class. They're basically, they're almost not even worth it on A plus class because of the amount you have to slow yourself down in order to be able to fit through the shortcut. You might as well just take uh, just take the, um, the long way round instead. Um, so the the racing lines on A, A class are just a little bit nicer than they are on A plus. And I think, at least for me personally, that's why I, I like to run this category instead. Yeah, and also A plus class is about 40 minutes when uh, this category A class is about 35 ish. Yeah, this this is about 35 36 minutes typically, and A plus class is about three or four minutes longer. And the reason for that is because we do uh, five laps on A class, uh, but each race is six laps on A plus class to offset the fact that uh, the uh, the car or the, the ship is a little bit faster, I should say. And then there's also uh, there's also B and C class, which are um, both four laps in the launch. And there is technically a D class, although to my knowledge it's not playable. Um, the only the only time that uh, that you'll uh, you'll see D class is if you're doing a a zones event in the campaign. Uh, and the way that those work basically is that uh, you have. Uh, your ship starts out at the slowest possible speed in, in this, uh, this theoretical D class I've been talking about. And uh, every time you make it through a zone, which is like a small section of the track, uh, your ship increases in speed ever so slightly. And the aim of that is not like, you know, not to complete a certain number of laps. It's basically a survival mode where you, your ship takes damage every time you collide with a wall. And you want to, uh, you want to try and survive uh, for as long as possible without colliding with the walls. And you can go up to max speed. I think the highest I've ever got up to on it was Mach 1.9, maybe? Um, you know, quite high. Um, but there is a there is a track that is actually very, very easy in the zones uh, because there are basically minimal walls, which you will uh, you'll see shortly. It's the only one in the entire run that basically doesn't have any walls, um, and for for a uh, a tournament run, the run I'm doing right now, that is uh, a little bit of a hindrance sometimes. But it also gives way to uh, some some pretty nice skips, some pretty interesting uh, interesting things that you can do uh, with this level right here, Sol. Uh, there is a cool skip that you're going to see basically immediately out the gate. I missed the start boost again, but that's okay. Who's counting? Me. Yeah, that was number two. Uh, so you jump off here, you go to the right of this, uh, this, I mean, this Japanese sign there, and then, uh, yeah, that just skips like a small section. I'm also going to try to see if I can remember the other thing that you told me about. I think it was Foden. Um, 
told me about another thing where you go up this ramp and then you drift down onto this ramp and it's ever so slightly faster. I haven't really gone for that much because it was discovered around the same time that I stopped, uh, I stopped streaming consistently. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that it is slightly faster, but it's also slightly harder and way more, way more easy to uh, to kind of send yourself just sailing off the side of the uh, the map, which is uh, why I was kind of uh, not sure whether I should go for it or not. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty comfortable with this. I think I might have showed shown you that because I think uh, for one I did the, the duty stuff. I did like a swaggier version of that to be funny. I, I think I think it was Foden that showed me that. I remember because I think it was when me and him were doing multiplayer on stream that he was trying to demonstrate it to me. Okay. Yeah, I, I did a, I did a slower swag version of that though. Well, you know, GDQ hot fakes, you gotta do the swag right. Yeah, of course. So this soul is actually going very well so far. I swear I don't jinx it. Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's going pretty well so far. I've got I got the skip every single time. Uh, sometimes when I when I come down that ramp I like to uh, just kind of let off the uh, the accelerator a little bit um, as I'm executing the skip just to make sure that I don't overshoot and uh, fall down the middle or something. Have to stop it like that. Yeah, we're we're talking a lot about uh, like ship control, ship control air control, just because this game absolutely is an anti-gravity racer, where you're just in the air the whole time, and it definitely feels like it when you're playing, and it doesn't really come across it uh, like it when you're just watching. As soon as you like figure Damn out how you're playing it, it makes a lot of sense. Where Not far. Air braking feels really intuitive, and pitching is really, really important. That's really frustrating. This was going pretty well until that point, but that's fine. You know, it's just a marathon. I'll still come very comfortably under estimate. But yeah, that would have been uh, if that had been a PB attempt, that would have been PB over because that's like a 10 second time loss when that skip gets messed up. First place. Yeah. But yeah, realms are probably going to be coming extremely, extremely underestimate. Like my PB is like a 38, and I could comfortably get under a 40 minute time pretty much every time. I can't remember if my PB is into the 35s now or the 36s. I can't remember which which. I think it's a low 36. I think it's a... Oh, it's like a mid 36. I think it's like a 36 20 something if I remember correctly. Um, and I was pushing for 35. I might start streaming this again honestly. Like just the experience of playing this game for 10 minutes is reminding me of how much I enjoy this game. I, uh, you know, I, I took a bit of a hiatus from streaming, um, just for some personal reasons. Um, but SS4C has really got me in the mood for it again. Uh, Unity Square, when I was talking about downtown earlier, and I said it was definitely in my top two, uh, Unity Square is the reason I said top two, because uh, I also really like this track. It's one that, uh, I think I'm quite well known among the other runners of this game for being inexplicably brilliant at not to my own horn too much, uh, but it's kind of just a track I, I get uh, in a way that I think other people struggle with a little bit more. You know, I, I, I understand the lines in it quite well, and uh, I also seem to get very lucky with the amount of turbos that I picked up, although I think that's a general thing that uh, the other runners of this game like to, like to say that I, I'm, a, I, I'm cheating, basically, because of how lucky I get with the number of turbos that I pick up versus uh, when they run. No, you're just lucky. Yeah. No, I I, I, I was hoping that the, the, the sort of sarcasm would come over. Uh, it is just incredibly good luck that seems to come across in most runs. Although not in this one, I'm not getting that many you're turbos getting, at all getting, right now. You're getting the look of everyone else. Congratulations, you get it. It's not a big deal. I'm still pulling out 32 even with like no cargo, but... Okay. 
Yeah, and as a co-com, I want to say this run's going very well. As a host, I want to say uh, you guys should absolutely donate. Is I there anything to lose, by the way? Or... Uh, no, not yet. Okay. But yeah, this, this run is sick. Well, you guys feel like it? You should know, should, should be very cool. We are getting towards the uh, the end of the run now. Uh, we've only got two more races after this one, so if you do want to hit that 400 mark before my run is over, then. Um, and yeah, you'll need to get your donations in quickly. We've probably got about maybe six more minutes or so, I reckon. So, not much time. Yeah, it, it's quite an easy snipe, honestly. Okay, that was alright. And yeah, one thing you'll notice about me when I'm running this game, if you haven't noticed it already, is that I do a lot of head movements. Um, I really sort of move with the with the ship. I'm a bit embarrassed to say it, but uh, but it's it's something I do when I speed on this game, and when I also speed on another game which I haven't played in a while as well, uh, Rolled Out, which uh, I don't think is being showcased at this event, as far as I know. Oh no, it is. It is. Oh, cool. Is it Helix? By Helix 13 underscore. Yeah. Helix 13 underscore. If you guys are awake for that run, absolutely watch it. Helix is, well, Helix 13 go to the emote uh, of theirs. And uh, I, I definitely think that, uh, that it applies when it comes to World Out. I've never seen someone who's consistently good at that game as Helix. So, yeah, that's a that's a run you'll want to tune into. Uh, unfortunately, I think I'll be missing it because I'll probably get sleep. Uh, if you're awake, that's a, that's a one I, I know you want to watch. Yeah, I think it's at like 4 a.m. for you, so... Yeah, probably. I'll probably be very asleep by that point. Mentally preparing to wake up at like 7 o'clock tomorrow morning so I can get home and time for my hosting shift at 8. Yeah, I'm... Okay, going back to what you said about the head movements, I'm also kind of embarrassed to say, but I also do like shoulder movements with this game. It's one of those things, I think you really sort of feel the rhythm of the game. Um, it's immersive. It almost like, it almost disrupts my flow if I become conscious of the fact that I'm doing it um, and then try and stop myself. You know, I almost feel like I play worse when I don't do the head movements. Uh, you know, I do it when, like, when I try not to. Yeah, I do it like a lot more when I play uh, HD instead of 48. I don't even know what we talked about yet, but yes, because I have to do so many more turns. So I just do it a lot we more. Went, we went nine tracks without talking about Wi-Fi HD. Honestly, I'm kind of proud of us. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess we should probably explain. Um, Wipeout Omega Collection is a, is a remaster of, uh, of Wipeout 2048, which is... Uh, the game that I guess I'm playing right now, and it also has uh, a remaster of Wipeout HD uh, bundled in with it. And basically, TLDR Wipeout 2048 good, Wipeout HD not good. Um, well, Wipeout HD is good. Wipeout HD alright, but the tracks kind of suck, and like the campaign mode is completely rigged. The races are really hard compared to Wipeout 2048. You can just lose for no good reason other than you didn't get enough turbos. Uh, well, not not exactly that, but yeah, the, the the races are a lot a lot harder, and you can die because the tracks are a lot tighter. Uh, and yeah, it's like a lot more aggressive. The tracks just have like no sort of fluidness to them. Um, you know, like in this, I I really enjoy the racing lines, but in in Wipeout HD tracks, it really feels a lot more like I'm, I'm trying to, you know, like I really have to put a lot of effort into taking all, all the racing lines. There's no sort of fluidity to it for me. Even though I played those tracks a lot as well, it just really feels like so clunky and a bit awkward in places. Yeah, and just personally, I'm not a very big fan. Um, I think Nez has done a few runs of some category HD. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've been doing so, some of the some of the all traps categories, on and off, and you know I, I think it's I think it's fun. It's just that it's it's a little bit difficult, uh, especially if I'm trying to like grind, and I can go like in an eight hour stream and I will die like twenty thirty times. Yeah. 
Okay. And uh, not, not even because I'm bad. <laughs> if you want to snipe that 400, you've got about three minutes to do it. This is the final track, and uh, it goes by quite quickly. Uh, especially when you pick up a turbo to begin with. I think it was the first track, honestly. My Empire Climb uh, luck continues. But I do want to make sure I don't get blasted by these power ups. That's another way that you can lose your. Uh... Yeah, I'm getting very unlucky with the uh, opponent power ups right now. Um, you can lose your, your top speed that way as well. Okay. Yeah. Should just about be out of the woods now. Yeah, I don't even have a full like boost meter at the top of the ramp. Breaking away could sometimes just be really, really hard, especially if you don't have a team. Yeah, and that's probably like outside of uh, outside of um, like power of RNG. The next biggest RNG is when you're at the start of a race and you're trying to get away from the uh, the chasing pack. Uh, Sometimes they'll just pick up a lot of power ups and really, uh, really spoil your day. Imagine just that, like, the first 30 seconds of the race. That's the entirety of Wipeout HD. Yeah, that's what Wipeout HD is like. Where I was getting shocked by power ups left, right, and center, that's just exactly how Wipeout HD works. And there's, there's, there's nothing in Wipeout HD that isn't really like that, apart from the alternative modes, which, by comparison, are really easy. It's really funny how, like, the mode in this game is probably easy for the sort of racing aspect. Uh, is so hard in Wipeout HD, and then things like zones are way easier in Wipeout HD. It really feels like they just... Compared to someone who was used to Wipeout HD, it really feels like they just skewed the balance of uh, Wipeout... Uh, what am I trying to say? If that's someone who's used to wipe out 2048, it really feels like they skewed the balance of difficulty and wipe out HD and just completely the wrong direction. And it's just... To be fair, it did feel like, like it gets beaten that their face. It, it's, it's very jarring, personally. Yeah, especially if you, like, started with 2048, because um, they started taking a different direction all the time. They're a lot more open, a lot more fluid. Because it's minus. Different. It's like they went away in between designing HD in 2048 and learned how to make a racing game. Yeah, because in, in Wipeout's history, it was, uh, it was one of the like, PS1 like AG racers. It was like competing with like, F Zero. And F Zero was more about racing. This was more about combat. It's a big boy adult game. This is this and is they still basically kind of took that for a long time. This is basically F Zero for like PlayStation kids. Yeah, is the best way I can describe it. Hey, what's up, Foden? Yo, you're just in time for the very end. Thank you for the good luck. I appreciate it. Yeah, we were talking about you. We we basically been talking about you non-stop and, and talking about the, uh, the the influence that you had on uh, the, the run in the community, uh, generally speaking. Uh, but yeah, everyone in everyone in chat, if you're interested in watching this, uh, make sure you follow not only me but also Foden uh, before because uh, he is just a, an absolute master in the Wipeout series. So we're just coming up on the end here. We've got about. Uh, 15, 20 seconds, uh, and then time will be coming up. This has been a fairly good Empire climb after lap one. Nothing really to complain about. I didn't get insanely lucky with boost RNG, um, but I generally didn't get boost RNG. And time. Complete. GG. Thank you. That was good. Given that I haven't played this game, today was the first time I played in like two months. I'm actually pretty happy with how that went. Uh, I don't were know you what you're like a local timer? Uh, it was not. Okay. Uh, what was the time? Uh, 37.19. 37.19? I'm happy with that. It's pretty good. Um, given that I had that one mistake on Sol, I reckon that could have been a sub-37 if things were going to look a bit better, but like, that's like what? What even? I can't remember what my PB is, I'm just going to Google it. Here at allspeedrun.com and search it really quick. Um, that, that still beat my PB by the minute. <laughs> That shows you how little I've done this category. 36.31 is my PB, so that was what, 45-ish seconds? So yeah, I think I think uh, I'll, yeah, I'll take really that and be happy with that, personally. Um, 
and yeah, I'll probably uh, I'll probably be coming back and doing some more runs of this on my stream. So if you enjoyed this or you enjoyed my time splitters run that was a little bit earlier, then uh, then make sure to follow me. Um, I haven't streamed in a while, but I'm I'm really really hoping to get back into it. Um, I've had a blast. Uh, Ho um, not hosting, running for SS4C. I think this is the final run I'm doing for you guys, uh, but I will be uh, I will be hosting the next couple of runs, and then I'll be doing some hosting shifts uh, tomorrow and Monday as well. So uh, so do stick around. Uh, next up, the game is Cow the Kangaroo, um, which I'm sure is going to be a laugh and a blast. <laughs>